Paula McCauley at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York. We're talking about our baggage, but how do you get rid of it? How do we get rid of our emotional baggage? Sometimes we think our baggage defines us. Just the other day, someone was taking the job so seriously, and again, they say things to me like, Emma, you're so calm, you're so, you're so, you know, easy going to work. And I say, this job doesn't define who I am. It doesn't define me. I like it. I love it. I work hard. I do a good job, I think. But it doesn't define me. What defines me is my faith, my family, my friends. Sometimes we think that emotional baggage, and sometimes we describe it. Oh, you know the one who lost weight and now she's fatter than ever? Did you? Right? Right? Or, oh, you know the one whose husband left him for her secretary? You know that one? We define someone by their emotional baggage. Watch yourself the next time you do that. My father used to always define people. Like, we played uh, games. He always was great at playing games. And we were playing Monopoly with my friend. And Ruth Silver said, yeah, I don't believe in buying, buying property in Monopoly. And he goes, that's the object of the game. <laughs> you buy houses and you buy a hotel. She goes, no, I want to save my money. He goes, for what? That's the game. To the day he died, if I met you, Ruth Soper, he'd say, remember, she wouldn't buy property in Monopoly? So he was defining her by that. So be careful how we define ourselves and about people. How much do we carry around? Are we carrying around three suitcases? Are we carrying around a backpack? Or just a teeny tiny purse? If we're carrying around a teeny tiny purse of emotional baggage, we can live with it. But if you're hauling around enough baggage that it weighs more than you, you really need to find a way to be present to yourself and instead of, it talks about paying too much attention to our faults. We need to let that go. The bad moods. How many times have we lashed out, our most wonderful one to lash out to is our husband or our wife, because they're there. How many times did you have, like, you feel bad about something, you're like, you don't care about me, you don't understand me, and they're like, whoa, what do I do? You know, they're like, <laughs> we transfer our bad feelings onto someone else. Also, sometimes people are terrified of being alone, so they make bad decisions about their relationships. But you, you talk about triggers that take you over the edge and go into your bags. When you overeat, it's like you're tired and you're hangry, you know, hungry and angry. And then you, you gain weight and you say, forget it. I'm just going to eat whatever I want. You're going to fail because you always fail. And then you go down that path. It's a story we tell ourselves. I am a failure. I fail at weight loss. We tell ourselves that story. Until we write a new story, oh, I'm going to succeed. <laughs> Kathy is sitting there going, I'm in remission. I'm going to succeed. I've lost 110 pounds. I'm a lifetime member. That's a story she's telling herself. And that's a good story. Forgiveness is vital. And the number one forgiveness is yourself. You did what you did at that time because you didn't know any better. I was a stupid college kid at the time where it was peace, free love, you know? Stupid. Forgive yourself. Go forward. Also, the process of letting go and healing takes time. Well, so far I've been working on it for 12 years. You can't, the, 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 the Relationships that you have with other people are the heaviest components in your life. If you've been betrayed by a parent, if you've been betrayed by a spouse, those are very difficult things to get over. But you can. Because otherwise, it defines who you are. You'll never be happy or try to lose weight. The PTSD, the moral injuries, the trauma, those are all baggage. We can treat ourselves as a victim or we can treat ourselves as someone who is victorious. Stuck in our own habits or saying, you know what, I, was, uh, I, I have a friend who became a widow at a very young age and they had a beautiful marriage, beautiful children, and... Um, She's one of the happiest people I know. And she said, I had to choose joy. Because when 
She had three kids in high school and junior high, and her husband died tragically in an accident. She said, I wanted to kill myself. Literally. Wanted to just say, I, I want to end it, because this isn't what I wanted with my life. I wanted to grow old with my husband. I had three beautiful children. I had to choose the joy. Otherwise, my grief would consume me. And this is what we have to do sometimes. We have to choose not to smell the rotten milk of our past and go forward and smell the roses of our future. And you have to really think, what's weighing me down? Is it you don't have enough time or you think you don't? Uh, is it temporary emotion? So many times we think this is such a bad day, but is it really bad? Are you going to chemotherapy? Is your kid in the hospital? What is a bad day? That you got stuck in a long line in Wegmans? That's not a bad day. <laughs> also, you need to maybe consider getting some help. We talked about counseling and how important counseling is. You can, oh, and you have to think about how you grew up. We had certain phrases that were associated with our family that my mother and father always said. Here, are, here they are. Can't never be happy while well, we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. And here's the third one. Well, one day our ship will come in, but it will probably be the Titanic. Oh, <laughs> you wonder why I got a couple of bags I need to unpack? Can't never be happy because our bad's going to happen. My father lost five brothers and one sister before they were 40. They didn't make can't never be happy up. Things happen in their lives. But can you be happy? Can you tra transcend it? That is where God comes in. Because what you carry affects your perspective. It talks about Moses here sending out 10 men to scope out the land of milk and honey. And two said it was great. And eight said, said we'll never do it and change their whole perspective. We, I love this one, hurting people hurt people. So many people think it's guns, guns, guns. What about the knives? What about the bombs? Hurting people hurt people. I think that's what we have to do is try to help the people who are hurting. They don't deal enough with God. Another thing is what you're carrying affects how fast you're going to go. If you don't get rid of some of the uh, baggage, it took a journey that should have taken them 11 days, took them 40 years. You think the Israelites had a lot of baggage? Another thing is that um, it was the, pay, uh, the purpose. Carrying too much baggage affects your purpose in life. It talks about confronting the past honestly, being aware of your thoughts, starting over. God is waiting for us to come to him with everything, every part of us and all that we are, so that he can give us all that he is. He loves us. He accepts us. He cares about us. Start, stop it right there, Bobby, and I'm going to